Well, how's it going, everybody? My name is Grovan, and welcome back to Let's Play Fallout 3. This is part two, and we just started the game, and now we are 10 years old at our birthday party. Let's jump right into it. So this is Butch, and uh, unfortunately, I was not able to get the first piece of dialogue he gave us on camera because he literally just did it uh, without me talking to him. But basically, he said, I'm hungry. Give me a piece of that sweet roll old lady Palmer gave you. And it's like, what, dude? Really? This is my party. Why do you want my sweet roll? So we have all these options here, uh, and this sort of gives you the first idea of how this game works with dialogue because you can do a whole bunch of different things. You can say, sure Butch, spit on the sweet roll and give it to him. You can say, go soak your head Butch, I'm not giving you my sweet roll. You do look hungry, what, your mom drank up all the ration coupons again? Oh my god, what a burn for a 10 year old. Let's go, uh, how about we share it, half for me, half for you, that's fair, right? Or you can have it. I don't even like sweet rolls. Let's go with that. I, I don't want to be... There's like, you know, there's three parts of the, the spectrum here. There's like a total goody-goody. There's like a neutral guy. And then there's like the just a total jerk. Um, and I kind of want to be like the neutral guy. But let's go ahead and say, how about we share it? Half for me, half for you. That's fair, right? How about we share it? What are you, five? Give I'm me ten. that sweet roll I'm going to pound you. Ah, this guy is such a jerk. Uh, you can have it. I don't even like sweet rolls. Yeah, right. Thanks, loser. Oh, and happy birthday. <laughs> yeah, so we are meant to hate this guy right off the bat, now as you can probably tell. Okay, so that was Butch. Butch. He looked awfully pleased with himself, which usually means something bad happened to somebody. Yeah, he kind of took my sweet roll. Uh, I don't want to talk about it. I know. Butch. What else is there to say, right? Pretty much. Hey, forget him. Have fun. It's your birthday party. Well, I'm trying. Okay, so does Butch have anything more to yeah, say? I mean, no. What about Wally this Mac? This party's pretty good, I guess. For a little kid. Balloons. Party hats. Not as cool as my party, though. Remember how my dad got Andy to do magic tricks? And we all played Hunt the Mutant in the atrium? Oh, right. You weren't invited to my party. Too bad, man. It was really fun. Okay, so if you can't tell, this is a little the jerk circle right here. And we also have Paul Hannon. Hey, uh, thanks for inviting me. Really cool party and everything. I know that, uh, Butch and I give you a hard time, but you don't take that seriously, right? Anyway, uh, happy birthday and everything. I better get back to, you know. Yeah, being a jerk. Uh, so as you can see, Paul Hannon kind of has a moral compass. Let's talk to Amata. She has nothing to say. Let's talk to Stanley. How do you like that Pip Boy, son? Fit all right and everything? Yeah. Uh, it's really cool. Did you fix it up for me? As a matter of fact, I did. I'm glad you like it. Some may think the A series is a bit basic, but I've always preferred them for their reliability. Thanks, Stanley. Don't mention it. Oh yes, I almost forgot. Happy birthday. Not much, but I hope you like it. And we've been given a kid's baseball cap, which is probably an upgrade to what we have right now. Melee weapons plus five. Yes, indeed it is. Okay, can we take a look at ourselves? There we go. Yeah, we are a little ten-year-old. All right, we have Dad and Andy left. Andy doesn't say anything. Let's talk to Dad. Where are you going, Dad? What are you doing? What are you doing, Dad? All right, let's go ahead and follow him. I think he's going to go to that intercom right there and say something. Part of my job. Jonas? Well, like hey, Doc. We're all set down uh, here. Sure thing, Officer Gomez. Thanks. I'll send him right nice down. With you. How's it going, Thanks pal? Coming. Oh, are you talking to me? Hey, that was Jonas on the intercom. He and I have been cooking up a little surprise present. Jonas is waiting for you downstairs on the reactor level. Go ahead. I don't think anyone will mind if you slip out for a few minutes. All righty. So, now we have a sort of quest. Meet Jonas on the reactor level. I think this is the wrong way. Yeah, whenever a door says inaccessible, that means you cannot Happy access birthday, it. Happy birthday, Go dearie. figure. My goodness. I hope I didn't miss the party. Uh, yeah, my dad and Amada threw me a great party, didn't they? They sure did. My, my. Ten years old already? Why, I can remember helping your dad change your diapers. And now look at you. A great big grown-up ten-year-old. With your very own Pip Boy. Since this was such a special occasion, do you know what I did? I wrote you a poem. Just for you. I hope you like it. 
Thank you. I will treasure it always. Is, uh, is that all? Of course. Run along now, dearie, and have yourself a wonderful birthday. Okay, note added, a birthday poem. This is actually really funny if I remember right. So if we go into data and go to notes, a birthday poem. Gray walls, impenetrable steel, suffocation, condemnation, little hands groping in subterranean uncertainty. Mommy? Daddy? Am I dead? Nay, nay, reborn into purifying fluorescence. A face emerges strong and male, father to me, father to all, overseeing our lives, our eternities. Harshness of discipline, harshness of love, obedience, my savior. Larva to pupa, pupa to worker, buzz, buzz, one within the steel honeycomb, one with the steel honeycomb. Ten lies within the 101, significant at last, till gray seep from walls to hair to soul, then eternal slumber, the sweet sleep of incineration. What an awesome poem to give to a 10 year old, right? So obviously you can tell she doesn't have all her marbles. Okay, let's head down here, which is where I believe the reactor level is going to be. We are looking for a man named Jonas. Who is this fellow right here? Hello there. What are you doing down here, young man? I thought kids weren't allowed down on the reactor level. I'm not a kid, I'm 10 years old. <laughs> you sure are. Pip-boy and everything. Look at that. If you can wait just one more minute, I think your dad will want to give you the surprise himself. Okay. So I kind of want to hurry this part of the game along because it's very slow-paced. I mean, I really did treasure it as a kid, but like... I don't know, I've played through this so many times. Hello, Dad. Are you ready for your surprise? I am indeed ready. Uh, what kind of surprise? The Overseer gave you your Pip-boy, and you're old enough to do some work, so... I figure you're old enough for this. Your own BB gun. It's a little old, but it should work perfectly. Jonas found it down here. It was in pretty rough shape. It took us a good three months to find the parts to get it working again. You know how tough it is to find a spring that small? Good thing Butch misplaced that switchblade of his. <laughs> so, what do you think? Want to give it a try? When he says that, good thing Butch misplaced his switchblade, that's always like so sinister for this character, because this guy is like such a good guy. It just it doesn't sit well with me. Uh what uh, here what here we can't shoot a gun here. We sure can't, unless we want the overseer beating down our door. Jonas and I have found a place though. Come on. Okay, so this sort of acts as the tutorial for the weapon system of the game. If we go into our items and go to weapons, we have a BB gun. Looks like it was already equipped. So if we press X, there we go. A boom! Very lethal. That uh, very lethal, very lethal gun that shoots BBs. <laughs> What's funny is you can actually use this, and it will actually do damage to enemies, but not much. All right. Well, what do you think? You can come down here and shoot anytime you want. That's a lie, because after this section, I don't think you can return down here. Um, but anyways, thanks, Dad. You're welcome, pal. Happy birthday. I love that dialogue option. A shotgun would have been nice. <laughs> okay, so I guess we're just going to shoot. Yes, so let's go ahead and shoot the targets. A boom, and a boom, and... How many bullets do we have? 48. Or BBs, I should say. Oh, God! Okay, well, I kind of need to see it. Look at that damage. Oh, OP! That damage is so OP! Alright, there we go. We killed our first enemy of the game, a rad roach. Good work. That's one less rad roach to deal with. Let's get a picture together. Capture the moment. Hey, Jones, okay. get a picture of me with a big game hunter. Smile! Yeah, just upload this to my Facebook, please. I need a new profile picture. All right, one more flash. Actually, I think there's... Oh, I, here I go spoiling things again. Six years later, so now we're 16 years old. Which is when everybody takes the goat. As far as I can tell, you're a perfectly healthy 16-year-old boy. So yes, you have to go to class to take your goat exam. Go on now. You've got a goat to take. And you'll notice that's an acronym, so it stands for something. Uh, if you say so, Dad. Hey, it's not my call. Those are the rules. You're 16 now, so this year you take the goat. Come on, it's not so bad. Everyone has to take it. You'll do just fine. Bye, Dad. Take care, son. I got out of here, and good luck. 
All right, so what the GOAT is, is basically it's an aptitude test, quest added, future and perfect, and also, here is our first bobblehead of the game. It is the medicine bobblehead, if you not, if you don't know well, what that means, basically. Oh, I guess this is going to explain it. You found a vault Tech limited edition bobblehead. The inscription on the base reads, The smart man knows a bandage only hides his wounds. Your medicine skill has been permanently increased by 10 points. So there's one for each of your normal skills, and then there's one for each of the special skills, like intelligence and strength, and those raise those by, like, one point. Uh, the smaller ones raise them by 10 points. Okay, so you, you don't want to miss that. I believe that is, Good like, morning. missable. Stopped in to see the old man before class, eh? Yep, see you later, buddy. And uh, that's Stanley over there, I think, right? Yeah, and you can talk to these people. They have dialogue, but we're going to continue snakes? on. I can show you a real tunnel snake, Amada. Oh, that's Hi, just Butch. dirty, man. Why don't you just leave me alone? So it looks Stupid like these guys are harassing snakes. our old friend, Amata. Amateur assholes, Amata. if you ask me. Why won't they leave me alone? It's not my fault my father's the overseer. I don't care about their stupid gang. Can you talk to them? Maybe Butch will listen to you. Please? Okay, so what's funny about uh, Fallout 3 is that although the game takes place in the future, I think it's like 21-something, uh, it's retained, the culture has retained like the, the 50s culture. So you'll notice this guy over here, he's wearing clothes like from the 50s, he's got that pompadour. So yeah, it's a very interesting aspect of the Fallout universe. Butch and his friends bothering you again? A bunch of idiots if you ask me. They think they're so tough with their gang. All they ever do is hang around and cause trouble. They've got it in for me because my father is the overseer. Like, that's my fault. Okay, I'll see if I can talk some sense into them. Thanks. You've always been a good friend. Try talking to Butch. They'll all do whatever he says. So if you remember, this guy was actually the guy that we talked to at the beginning of this episode. Uh, he was a little jerk kid. So now he's all grown up. Yeah? What do you want? Uh, What's going on? Uh, actually, Tunnel Snakes, you guys some kind of gang? Is that it? Only the baddest gang in Vault 101. Like you don't know. We rule this vault, and what we say goes. You'll stay out of our way if you know what's good for you. Okay, um... What's going on here? None of your business, kid. Get out of here before you get hurt. If you mess with the tunnel snakes, you're asking for it. Got me? Okay, so here's our first speech challenge, and you'll notice there's a percentage... If we, uh, that's the percentage that we can pass this. If you keep messing with her, the, the overseer is going to come down on your gang. Let's go with that. Like I'm going to ah, really? to shrimp like you. Get lost, Poindexter. So we failed it. Uh, the, but the thing you can do is you can save before every speech challenge like that and just do it over and over until you pass it. Leave her alone or you'll answer to me. And who are you? Her boyfriend? Maybe. Keep talking like that, boy. And we'll send you back to your daddy with a few broken bones for him to fix. That's it, Butch. You and me, right now. You've got to be kidding me. Come on, Tunnel Snakes. This twerp needs another lesson. All right. Butch, stop Let's get out our fisticuffs and punch him right in the face. Mm. I don't think we can kill him. Okay. Where's Butch? Where'd you go, Butch? There you are. So I thought someone stops this fight, but maybe not. Tunnel Snakes, this little bitch is... Okay, okay, you win. We'll leave the little girl alone. Yeah, that's right. I just want a, a 3v1, anyway. okay? On, so you better snakes. give me some respect. We're here. And maybe you guys notice in the top left it You're says, it said, uh, karma gained. There's a karma system in this game. Basically, you can do things that raise your karma or decrease it, and that de determines if you are a bad guy or a good guy. Anyways, now to take the goat. Well, you made it. All set for the goat? Trust me, it really isn't that bad. Just something everybody has to go through. Uh, sure. Uh, come on, I don't really have to take this stupid test, do I? Listen, I like your dad. I might even like you if I wasn't your teacher. So here's what I'm going to do. If you want to skip the test, just tell me how you want it to come out, and I'll take care of it for you. Okay, so that's pretty interesting. I think I want to show you guys how the actual test goes, because it's pretty funny, though, so... Uh, I think I'd rather just take the go for myself and take my chances. Good for you. Don't worry, you'll do fine. As soon as everyone's found a seat, we'll get started. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's sit down. But first, if we take a look at the chalkboard over here, uh, there should be some funny things. 
Christine Kendall puts out. There we go. Uh, Broch the crotch. Broch, of course, is the teacher. And that's the only funny thing I think here. So let's see where Christine Kendall is. There she is. Hello. Uh, apparently you put out, and that's great for you. Let's go ahead and sit down. Go ahead. Well, now that everyone has managed to find the classroom, we can finally get started. No talking, and keep your eyes to yourselves. Yes, I'm talking to you, Mr. Deloria. And that's Butch. Unless anyone else has an insightful comment, let's get started. Question one. A frenzied vault scientist runs up to you and yells, I'm going to put my quantum harmonizer in your photonic resonation chamber. What's your response? Wouldn't be the first time, you know what I mean? Okay, but doctor, wouldn't that cause a parabolic destabilization of the fission singularity? Yeah, up yours too, buddy. Say nothing but grab a nearby pipe and hit the scientist in the head to knock him out. For all you knew, he was planning on blowing up the vault. Say nothing but slip away before the scientist continue his rant. So basically how this works is this chooses what your main stats are going to be. Uh, like this one would be sneak, obviously, because you want to sneak away. But I think we're just going to do the funny ones because you can change it anyways. Uh, but doctor, wouldn't that cause a par parabolic destabilization of the fission singularity question two while working as an intern in the clinic a patient with a strange infection in his foot stumbles through the door the infection is spreading at an alarming rate but the doctor has stepped out for a while what do you do amputate the foot before the infection spreads scream for help meditate the infected area to the best of your abilities restrain the patient and merely observe as the infection spreads wow how sinister Medicate the infected area to the best of your abilities. Question three. You discover a young boy lost in the lower levels of the vault. He's hungry and frightened, but also appears to be in possession of stolen property. What do you do? Give the boy a hug and tell him everything will be okay. Confiscate the stolen property by force and leave the boy there as punishment. Pick the boy's pocket to take the stolen property for yourself and leave him to his fate. Lead the boy to safety and then turn him into the overseer. Give the boy a hug and tell him everything is will be okay. Come on, we're not evil. Question four. Congratulations. You've made one of the Vault 101 baseball teams. Which position do you prefer? Pitcher, catcher, designated hitter, none. You wish the Vault had a soccer team. Let's go with designated hitter. Question five. Your grandmother invites you to tea, but you're surprised when she gives you a pistol and orders you to kill another vault resident. What do you do? Obey your elder and kill the resident with a pistol. Offer your most prized possession for the resident's life. Ask Granny for a minigun instead. After all, you don't want to miss. Makes sense. Throw your tea in Granny's face. Offer your most prized possession for the resident's life. That's the most normal one I can think of. Question six. Old Mr. Abernathy has locked himself in his quarters again, and you've been ordered to get him out. How do you proceed? Use a bobby pin to pick the lock on the door, trade a vault hoodlum for his cherry bomb and blow the door open, go to the armory, retrieve a laser pistol, and shoot the lock off. Why can I not talk? Walk away and let the old coot rock. Use a bobby pin to pick the lock on the door. Question seven. Oh no, you've been exposed to radiation and a mutated hand is grown out of your stomach. What's the best course of treatment? A bullet to the brain? Jeez. Large doses of anti-mutagen agent. Prayer. Maybe God will spare you in exchange for a life of pious devotion. Removal of the mutated tissue with precision laser. Let's go with that one. Question 8. A fellow Vault 101 resident is in possession of a Grognak the Barbarian comic book. Issue number 1. You want it. What's the best way to obtain it? Trade the comic book for one of your own valuable possessions, steal the comic book at gunpoint, sneak into the resident's quarters and steal the comic book from his desk, slip some knockout drops into the resident's nuka cola and take the comic book when he's unconscious. Trade the comic book for one of your own valuable possessions. Question 9. You decide it would be fun to play a prank on your father. You enter his private restroom when no one is looking and... Loosen the bolts on some pipes. When the sink is turned on, the restroom will flood. Put a firecracker in the toilet. That's sure to cause some chaos. Break into a locked medicine cabinet and replace his high blood pressure medication with sugar pills. Jesus Christ. Manipulate the power wattage on his razor so he'll get an electric shock the next time he shaves. Let's go with put a firecracker in the toilet because that seems like the most... Question 10. Who uh, is indisputably docile the most answer. important person involved 101? So this question he is really funny. He us from the harshness of the atomic wasteland, and to whom we owe everything we have, including our lives. 
Who is indisputably the most important person in Vault 101? He who shelters us from the harness, harshness of the atomic wasteland and to whom we owe everything we have, including our lives. The overseer, the overseer, the overseer, or the over overseer. Come on. Why can I not talk this episode? I don't know about you guys. I think I'm going to go with the overseer. Pencils down, people. That's it. The infamous goat. I'm sure most of you didn't find it so bad. Others, well, there are always openings in the maintenance department. Don't forget to hand in your test before you leave. You don't want to know what happens to people who fail the goat. You can have the rest of the day off to celebrate or to pray as the situation warrants. All right, let's go ahead and talk to okay. Mr. Brock. They say the goat never lies. According to this, you're slated to be the next vault chaplain. God help us all. Now, I think he says that no matter what. Uh, because I don't think I've ever heard a different option. But then again, I answer the questions the same pretty much every time. Wow, that's what I've always wanted to be. My dreams are finally coming true. Whatever I just answered randomly, is that how you got stuck with your job? That can't be right. The stupid test got it all wrong. Uh, none of these options I'm really vibing with, but let's just go. That can't be right. Listen, I was just as obnoxious at your age. I didn't take the goat seriously. Look where I ended up. Just between you and me. The whole test is a joke. If you don't like the results, I can make your goat come out any way you want. Just let me know. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so these are all of our skills. Barter, big guns, energy weapons, explosives, lockpick, medicine, melee weapons, repair, science, small guns, sneak, speech, and unarmed. And the reason they're all at different numbers is because it depends on what we picked for our special. Obviously, if you have high agility, our sneak is going to be higher. Uh, etc. So now what we can do is we can tag three skills to start out higher than all of the other ones. So let me just run through this stuff, make sure I pick the right ones. Alright, so we're going to go with small guns, sneak, and speech. Small guns because I like to use sniper rifles, and even though they're, a sniper is a very big gun, it still cat is categorized as a small gun. Sneak because you guys know me, I like playing sneaky characters. And speech because speech is a major, major, major part of this game. It allows you to like bypass a whole bunch of stuff that you don't want to do, and uh, it's just really incredibly helpful. So, there we go. Exit the classroom. Actually, we're going to exit this Let's Play. In the next episode, we will exit the classroom. And we're pretty much done with the tutorial section of the game. Once we exit the classroom, that's when the fun starts. So, hopefully you guys have enjoyed the past few episodes. Now we're going to break into the actual game. My name is Grovana. Hope you all had a good time watching the series. And I'll see you next time. Bye. Hey everyone, if you enjoyed that video, help me out by liking it, adding it to your favorites, and sharing it on Facebook and Twitter. If you want to go the extra mile, go ahead and follow my social pages as well as my Twitch channel. The links are in the description below. Finally, if you want to subscribe and or watch another video that's probably going to be related to this one, you can click the big ol' annotations on the screen. Thanks for stopping by and have a great day.